Um, Elizabeth, uh, you know, picking up on what Justin just said about letting go, uh, you're, you know, for everything there is a season and this season is a, is a rough season uh, for you in so many ways and you've had to let go. I mean, yeah. you're, you're constant moment by moment here. Uh, do you just have a, a word before we go about, uh, you've already spoken eloquently about how it is that you, you try to move from survive to thrive, but just a, a word of reflection on anything Justin just said. Well said, Justin. Uh, yeah, I, I, I always go back to this line from a woman named Paula Darcy. Um, she, she had a tragedy in her life and she said, God comes to you disguised as your own life. And, you know, I think that no matter, you know, there, there's the sense in this pandemic that, you know, someday we'll get back to real life, you know, but in a sense, whatever your life is, is real that day. And this is real life and it's nothing, nothing any of us anticipated, but I feel like um, I am settling into that a little bit that, you know, this is life right now. It is not at all how I imagined it would be right now or at any time. And um, I really want to find the life and the thriving place within this non-thriving condition. And um, I just, you know, I, I, I say that as a human being, not as a, even as a priest. I, I do say it as a priest, but I really have to live it. And it's very, very a high challenge and yet um, we're only asked to do what we can in each moment. So I think that for me, the practice of being in the moment, um, whether you, you do that through a meditation practice or just remind yourself moment by moment, this, this is real life. You know, we don't have a real life to go back to. Um, it's, it's, there was a, a docu, a, a bio, pick or something by a woman in the 80s called Blown Sideways Through Life. And it was her self, her autobiography of all the twists and turns her life took. And it was really funny, a monologue that she did. And I, I think about that. We're all being blown sideways through life. And there is no, we never did control how we're going to live or die or be well, or where our jobs are going to take us or how our kids are going to turn out. Um, I think this pandemic just puts in high relief all the realities that were already there and we just have to face them in in double time and you know right up in our faces and as justin was saying um you know well i lost my train of thought on that one but um you know it's it's a time yeah we're all suffering together that's what you were saying is that that we're all suffering this together to whatever degree and um you know, that's a reality too. We always were in everything together and we couldn't always see it. So I think that's another piece that even in our isolation, somehow we're connecting more thoroughly, you know, and, you know, in terms of communicating and thinking about people to call. And when we talk here, we are looking at each other. Um, so I don't feel like something new I don't feel like everything's new. I think everything is, we can see it in a new way. And we're being asked to enter into life in a new way that um, we didn't have to before, but it's going to teach us something. It's teaching me. I'm not trying to say, we are going to learn from this. I'm trying to say, what can I learn? Because that's how I'm going to get through these days without losing my marbles. And I also want to want my son to feel like life is happy in each day too. I don't want it to be a big struggle and a big bummer every single day. And, you know, we should have fun with what kind of mask we're going to wear and, you know, try to find some joy in the burden of the, the small and large burdens of it all. And that's a big challenge. So I think that that's where, you know, we've been through Lent. Um, we, we know how to live in Lent and flog ourselves in certain ways, but we find a very hard time finding joy, like Justin said. Um, we, we have to challenge ourselves to harness the joy that can be found. And um, it may be minuscule, but you know, in the good meal you put together or whatever, it's, it, these things add up. And I think it's, it's really, really important. Um, and they just add up to inviting God into our lives and inviting God around our table and to and being together. So um, here he is right now. Hey, Let's Charlie. Go. Yeah. End the hour. So that's all, you know, that's where I'm at. I like to feel like it's the moment by moment choices of yeah. where God might be. 
Well, uh, thank you for that. And Justin, thank you for, you, you both have shared your lives with us. And, and I know I speak for everybody who's gonna be watching this to say that we are grateful to each of you and to both of you uh, for your open soul time that you just spent with us. Uh, and to all of you out there, as I said at the outset here, we have a great desire to care for you, that you might be well in your humanity. This is a most human moment for all of us. Uh, you'll see attached below here uh, also the uh, 10 habits, uh, 10 holy habits to stay calm and carry on that I put together a week or two ago. Uh, these are habits that, uh, that all people uh, of our faith come and go with, but uh, they're touchstones that you can return to. We do want you to know that we have every desire and every prayer that you be well, that you be well and fully alive to the glory of God. If you find yourself in a most difficult time, I hope you'll reach out to Beth Ralston. She's coordinated our care for each other because we desire to be a community of love and to have you be a part of that uh, and to care for you. So peace and blessings. Justin in your blue room, cool. Uh, Elizabeth, uh, with looks like some of your great and some of Charlie's artwork behind you and a photo bomb <laughs> of Charlie too. Uh, okay, everybody uh, out there in uh, TV land, God bless you and thank you so much. Uh, we'll be seeing you again real soon. Thanks again to both you guys. Okay, take care.